Good morning, this is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet and Company, and I'm glad you're joining me today. You know, I want to say uh, this morning that welcome to the program, first of all. Secondly, I want to share how exciting, how thrilling it is for me as a teacher of the Word of God, as a preacher, as a prophetic person, all of those. Uh, always through the years, the, the biggest thrill for me is to see people saved, see people healed, see people come to actually have that personal, powerful, there is nothing else uh, on this side of life that is, is a better gift than to see someone come to know the Lord, to continue to come to know Him better, to be one who can be an instrument in the hand of God, to somehow use your gifting that He has given to you, to draw people either unto Him for the first time or to continually teach them, uh, preach with an anointing that will draw them closer to the God that they have learned about. And I want, to, I'm so thrilled that as of late, uh, being a prophetic person and, and heralding the news of the very uh, moment in which we're living right now, uh, tied in with those things that the Lord has shown me in 2004 that amazingly now I am seeing come to pass before my very eyes in which I speak of probably more than you all want to hear about but you know when when I have people that write to me when I have people that contact me and ask me questions you know there's nothing more thrilling than that to know that there are those of you out there who do have an ear to hear for this day and this hour in which we are living in. I love that. And you know, to have young people contacting me and asking me to pray and asking me to explain the world at hand today to them to receive the message that I've been trying to put out um, and most recently the message that the Lord gave me on June 15th 2003 for this next generation. No greater thing than to know that there are people who are listening to his voice, who do want to hear him in this day and hour, who want to follow him and who want to do what he spoke to me to prevail with their God in this day and hour. So this morning I wanted to just take a few minutes with you to come back. We haven't done a video in quite a few days. I wanted to come back and pick up where we left off with speaking on that June 15th revelation to the young people and what the Lord had to say about their generation. Now the one thing that I did uh, read to you from my book, Manifesto Before the Cock Crows, which was written in 2004 and is documented revelation of that year, of perils that were to come in soon coming days. And in the last video I spoke of uh, the generals and how God was speaking to me ab about the generals having a comeback and how they needed to be going about laying their hands on these young people and passing down their anointing. I also mentioned how prophetically I did hear Evelyn Roberts just a few months after the Lord, well, yes, had spoken that to me, um, and I heard her on television, the story of how she had spoken to Oral and said, Oral, you need to get up from where you're sitting in their home, 
You need to go out and begin to lay hands on this generation and pass down your anointing to them. And I know that after Evelyn passed away, I think Oral spent many of his days and much of his time ministering from his own home to younger people who were coming up in ministry and what a powerful, powerful thing, fulfillment of prophetic words given to me and to Evelyn and whoever else may have heard them at the time. But uh, this morning I wanted to come to you and let's just take a minute to go back a few pages in my book because I want to uh, speak to you a little bit about the generals and something that took place at this time uh, when my book was written and actually this began in October of 2002. Um, the Lord had just spoken to us about the uh, war in Iraq was coming and I had a vision of that uh, months before it even transpired and the Lord was showing us a lot through that but I want to pick up here and uh, where we're talking in October of 2002 this was a mile marker prophetic word for the day the prophetic word was this is the Lord speaking I am making a new highway for the going forth of my word in the earth. Right now, even as I speak it to you, it is already a work in progress and you will see it in a few days. The prophet, another prophetic word that came was, this is a day like no other in the earth. There never has been, this is God speaking, nor will there ever be a day like this again. I will have for myself a day and an hour and this is it. Today is that day. This is my day, said the Lord. Another prophetic word that came at that time, look out across the nations for I am going to get this. I'm going to raise up a people in every nation unto myself. They will know me for who I truly am. You will begin to see massive armies of people coming unto me and other nations. I will raise them up by myself and for myself without help from man. These will be a mighty people unto me. Watch and see. I am going to call them myself and they will hear and answer me by themselves. Now we have all of these things were prophesied on tape back in that day when we used cassette tapes. So they were recorded live and they are on tape. Now in each one of these cases I have seen come to pass every one of these prophecies that I just read to you here. These short prophecies but one thing that I was thinking of yesterday, and I want to mention this right here, is the Lord just kept speaking to me yesterday about how, Ginger, you know, I, in my experience as a prophetic person, I've been to so many meetings where, you know, they would allow a time like women's conferences where there were thousands of women there. And they would open up the floor for pr prophecy. And all of these prophecies would just come from everywhere, popcorn prophecies. And I'll never forget, because this is how the Lord works with me. You know, there are people who we can prophesy at will. We really can. We, we can prophesy whatever we want to prophesy whenever we want to do it. We have a mouth, we have a voice, and we can do that. But God, there is also a timely word for a time and period that comes by the Spirit of God without our knowledge. In other words, it bypasses our mind, our will, our understanding. <laughs> you know, it goes way past all of those. And it's God's Spirit within who is speaking something forth that God sees is coming 
and that we have no knowledge of. And so I, I have been in meetings where this, this prophecy just goes and goes and goes. And there was really no response. There was just no uh, movement of the Spirit on the people over these words that had been spoken. And I was standing there and all of a sudden, and this is how it happens with me, my heart would just begin to pound so hard <laughs> that, that you feel like it's going to just jump right out of you and leap out. And that's the Spirit of God inside trying to get a word out. And I would hear the words formulated in me by His Spirit. But in that particular meeting, I didn't want, I didn't want to speak it right then. I just didn't want to. And yet it was, it was pounding in me. And so then the, the open floor for prophetic word ceased. And I thought, oh no. And the praise and worship began again. And I mean, this is a huge meeting controlled by those on the platform. And so I'm standing there and my heart is still pounding and I begin to perspire because it's pounding so hard. And I, I'm like, I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. What do I do? God, forgive me for, for holding this in. But something's got to give here too because I feel like I'm about ready to burst. And you know, right then, that music stopped. Everybody on that platform stopped. Just, there was no, we're going to do this, we're going to do that right now. No, it just came to a screeching halt. And all of a sudden, you could have heard a pin drop amongst these thousands of women in this conference. And here I am standing there, you know, like a little mouse, and my heart is pounding, pounding, pounding. And I said, okay, Lord, I see you're opening the door. And boy, out it rolled. And you know, when those words came out of my mouth, it has nothing to do with me. It's just being a willing vessel who will allow the Spirit of God to speak when He wants to speak. And you know, after that word came forth, Oh my goodness, the place just busted out and it was not me. It was the Holy Spirit and an anointing came and it worked amongst the women for a good five minutes. There was response. There was God working there. Well, I want to tell you today that when I give you these words, when you see me posting anything on the internet, I do not just post words. I post what I hear from the Holy Spirit, and I only post what I hear. I only post what He tells me to post. And in my book, when I read you these three simple prophecies here, these short but simple prophecies, do you know how much power is found in these prophecies? And you know, there are a lot of words being spoken out there in this day to interpret the day, to interpret uh, world events, and so on and so on and so on. But I am telling you, that God speaks, and when He speaks, He usually doesn't have, like, there are times when He'll speak a lot because He expounds on something, but when He speaks, it's very precise, and you can, you can count on it, if it's Him, you can absolutely count on the, the fact that when time goes by, you will see those words come to pass. Well, I'm telling you that these words have indeed come to pass. So take heed to those because they will work a work in your life. Just like that word I just shared with you worked a work amongst those women in that conference. And that that's just one instance. You know, I have uh, played the songs the Lord has given to me over the years and I am telling you you know you see people healed you see 
you see grown men just begin to weep in the middle of a song and you have no idea that that's going to happen. And when it does, you just have to keep moving with the Spirit of God because He's working a work. And you just let it happen and there is nothing more thrilling, as I've already said several times, than to see God move and God perform His good and perfect will. So, go back in this tape, rewind the video, and listen carefully to these words that I just read to you here because they have already come to pass. Alright, in each of these cases, I want you to know that we saw the results of these words immediately, and we were shocked and amazed. A new highway going forth for the Word of God, that actually happened in October of 2002. And you know that has done nothing but increase since that time. There were markers in the body of Christ uh, for the going forth of the Word of God in that year. So it, it can be marked and identified as a prophetic word that was fulfilled. Where it says here that he'll have a day and an hour for himself and that this is his day. If you're watching prophecy on a world uh, spectrum, you, you are just absolutely going to know that this is that day. This is a day like no other. When you see the developments in the Middle East, when you see the developments in Egypt, Oh my goodness, you know, and all of the things that are happening everywhere, uh, economically, politically, and so on, you're seeing that this is a day like no other, lining up with the end of end time biblical prophecy. All right, uh, the third prophetic word here was to look out at the nations. I'm going to begin to raise up people unto myself. And do you know that in that fall... Um, <clears throat> Well, actually, when, when we went to war with Iraq is when it really began. And the Lord had spoken to me about that and said also, and it's on the previous pages here, but um, said that, that the war in Iraq was actually going to open up telecommunications for the gospel to go into places, dark places, where it had been withheld from people's nations, tribes for a very, 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 very long time. And I tell you, uh, Joel Rosenberg just a few years back put out a video and I kept it and then, you know, they changed Facebook so I lost it. But he had a video out, not a video, it was a recording on television. Someone interviewed him, a news station, and he was sharing how uh, in Iraq, there were more Muslims saved since the war in Iraq, and the way that they were saved was not through our service people going in there and sharing the gospel with them, which they were accused of by the government there, but it was a false accusation because what happened was people started having dreams, seeing visions, and I'm sure you've heard about it by now. But they did. They started seeing Jesus. Jesus would appear to them in a dream and tell them who he was. Tell them to go and to tell people about him because his return is coming soon. And there were, you know, this happened in Africa, but it all began after I received this word. And, you know, my people, the people that were with me, they're God's people, but they were people, his people that he gave to me to minister with. We saw these things happening like immediately. I mean, weeks, days. Um, and I'm not talking months. I'm talking literally just days and weeks following him speaking the words to us. Well, let me go on here. During the war, we would hear things about the war before they came out in the news. God was really using that situation to speak to us about things that relate to our position as the body of Christ in Him now. That really didn't have a lot to do with what we're talking about. But So the word came forth with great power. 
The television networks began to reach places as never before. And I don't know if, if you, any of you recall this happening in the body of Christ at that time, but I'm telling you, Charisma Magazine, every place was hot with um, the news that all of a sudden something had happened. Something had happened in the spiritual realm. Reinhard Bonnke, Benny Hinn, all of these evangelists traveling worldwide who had had crusades for many, many years, all of a sudden they began to just explode in numbers. And not only in numbers, but people's hearts began to open up. There was much weeping. You would see masses of people out with their hands raised and tears running down their face. And this is exactly what the Lord had shown us was going to come to pass at that time. And it, indeed, it did. I have articles in a box where I... I treasured those. I put them in with all of my materials from my book just to confirm what we had seen and heard at that time. So the word came forth with great power. The television networks began to reach places as never before. Massive crusades immediately began to spring forth and God was performing his words immediately, shocking all Christians who were paying attention. At that time, after these things took place as foretold, I heard the Lord say to me, Ginger, I'm going to bring the generals together. Watch. And at that time, I didn't know anything really about the generals, but he told me that I would know. So one day, I'm walking through my kitchen, and the Lord said, I'll tell you who the generals are. And he began to name all of these ministers of the gospel. He started with Kenneth E. Hagen, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Billy Brim, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Paul and Jan Crouch, and the list goes on and on and on. And any elder who is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ at that time would have been included in this list. And it went on and on. And God said to me at that time, Look at how I appointed all of them at about the same time. These are all my generals. He told me that at the same time that he had spoken to me 25, 30 years ago, he had spoken to many. Many had answered the call, and now they were generals. <clears throat> And many of them were, you know, 10, 20 years before me as well, and 30. <clears throat> he had spoken to many, and many had answered the call, and now they were generals. He said, Ginger, they don't fully understand this, but they were appointed specifically for this very present hour that we are in right now. He began to show me things that he referred to as coming from the bird's eye view. In other words, coming from the full counsel of God on the matter. He told me that he had to fulfill Matthew 24, 11 through 14 before his son could return. He had told me in approximately 1998 that he had to have a massive means to reach the masses if his word was to be fulfilled. He sang this little song to me. We had sung it nearly 20 years before. I didn't really like the song, and there was a line in it particular that was prophetic. That's what he was revealing to me as we were having this conversation. He said, I know that you didn't like that song, and you even had an argument with one line in the song. It went like this, and he began to sing it to me. God's not dead. He's alive. I feel him all over me. I feel him in the air. And he said, did you hear that? I feel him in the air. Did, you didn't agree with that line, but I'm telling you now that I wrote that line in that song. My word is going to go all over the earth through the air. I knew that long before any of you. 
this was my plan and I am going to carry it out. Then he went on to say, the generals, and this is present back then, through their obedience fell into a much bigger plan than they knew, than they knew then or even now. But I knew it all along. He said, you don't think that the population is going to shrink from what it is now, do you? And he went on to say, he would, how would we reach them all? And I can't lie, my word must be fulfilled. So the very next day, someone came to my door and handed me the brand new brochure that came out for the newly created Christian Satellite Sky Angel. That's been a few years ago. And as I read the brochure, their faith statement was word for word what he had spoken to me the day before about the massive means to reach the masses that Matthew 24, 14 would be fulfilled. And I tell you, right at this point, and I've written it in the book, that I wept at these things. You know, when God speaks, there are things that He speaks that He's literally weeping over because there's such monumental things that He is speaking. And so we'll go on here. He told me that every one of the generals had to be because... Now listen, it's time to reach them all. He said, for this hour, Ginger, it could no longer have been just a Catherine Kuhlman, a Smith Wigglesworth, a Maria Wood Wood Woodworth Edder. He said, no longer could it be a few highly anointed with my spirit scattered throughout time. It would now take a powerful amount of laborers to reach these masses which he foresaw and foretold. I walked across my kitchen after hearing these words and the Lord spoke to me and said, Go get that book over there on the shelf. I did. And it was a book on Billy Brim's Prayer Mountain. I had, I'd had the book for some time, but honestly had never read it and had really forgotten I even had it. I opened to a page, looked down to begin to read, and there on the page, before my eyes, she was telling about a meeting that had taken place many years before. Billy was sharing how a prophetess had prophesied that God was calling forth generals in that very meeting that night. She said that Kenneth, Gloria, and the names went on, were all there in that meeting and they are now generals in the land today. An odd thing that happened, I have a note here, an odd thing that happened as I was reading this little book, my phone rang and the caller ID read Branson, Missouri, which is where Billy's Prayer Mountain is. No one answered when I picked up the phone, and it's even odder because I don't know anyone in Branson, and whoever made the call never called again. <clears throat> How the Lord works. Then after all of this happened, um, here's another thing that the Lord gave me shortly following that. And these are powerful. I don't share these with you lightly, because these things are actually taking place right now before your very eyes and you know I've held meetings and where I speak about these things and you would be so amazed and honestly amazed isn't really the word that we need to be using in this day and hour because we need to be alarmed when we realize that God's people are asleep at this very moment when we need to be the most alert, the most aware. You talk on scriptures about, we read scriptures about being caught unaware. And I've shared this with you already, so I won't go into depth about it. But this is a moment when you just, you, you've got to be shaken up. Just like I told you, Jesus showed me that sieve that came down on, on the land in front of me and 
and he led me around and there were all of these people that they were his people and they were sitting on the ground and they had just fallen over and they were laying on the ground like they'd just fallen into a dead sleep and he walked over to pick them up and uh, went back to the sieve, pointed to the sieve and looked at them and said, I'm getting ready to sift the nations before your very eyes. I need you to be awake now. Now, you know, when I come to you, I don't come to you just to talk. I don't come to you to preach, teach what I want to preach and teach. I come to you to share with you, please hear me, the Word of God for the moment that we're living in right now. So take these seriously. These are like gold nuggets, honestly. You need to take these like and guard them. They're, they're gold. Wake up with these words. Come to the forefront. Be a warrior. The Lord spoke to me a few years ago and said, you know, go from being a worrier to a warrior. Isn't that powerful? If you're going to be new, then do new. And wake up. Wake up and and know. You know, they say wake up and smell the coffee or whatever. But, but really, wake up, people of God, to know what moment we're living in right now. It is a powerful, powerful day. And these words that I'm sharing with you are just... You have no idea. They are so profound. They came from the mouth of God. That's where they came from. And so we need to pay attention and watch. When you hear the words and you watch them come to pass, then you know they're from God. And those are the words that we need to, to place the greatest value on for our lives, always as a Christian. Okay? So, um... Here's another vision then that he gave her. He gave me a vision at this time. I saw the generals all on horses, all with flags in their hands, oh my goodness, and all on the top of a hill. I looked down the sides of the hill and there were masses of people on horses on this hillside. They were jammed in so tightly on the hill that they couldn't move. Oh, I'm telling you, I was there. I was hovering above this whole scene. And I am telling you, you talk about goosebumps or whatever, however you want to describe it. When you see something in the Lord that is just so, uh, so full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and it's just, it's a heavenly thing that's taken place, and you can't move. You can hardly breathe when you see these things. They were jammed in so tightly on the hill that they couldn't move. These were the armies of the generals. They're following. The Lord showed me that the generals had come together at this summit to take counsel together. Then they would all proceed. Their armies were waiting on the hillside for their orders to be passed down to them so that they could move too. This was a holy vision, a glorious thing to God. Now, I want to tell you that when we receive these words, and I told you that weeks later they happen, and that is the truth. When when we received even this vision, what we saw transpire immediately after that was that because of all of these, um, well, let me just read on here because I do have some of it written out. This is what happened following that vision. I saw the generals all beginning to have each other on their television programs. Now, remember in this vision, all the generals were on horses at the very top of this hill. They were, they were in charge of this gathering. And the generals were on the, the horses that were in the center of all things at the very top of the hill. They had the flags in their, in their hands. And they were, they were waiting on the Lord together. They were, they were receiving counsel. They were instructing each other together according to the discernment 
that they were seeking God for their together. Now what happened in the natural, oh this is so powerful you guys, this is so so powerful. Because what happened in the natural was that you begin to see because of the mighty outpouring, this new outpouring that took place and you know it's an absolute truth. Um, you can check on ministries, especially Reinhard Bonnke, because he mentions it. He was here at Victory Christian Center. I didn't know he was going to be here, and this was in 2003. And the Lord spoke to me that day, and he said, he told me, he said, Reinhard is going to be at Victory tonight, and you need to be there. And so I went. Well, I knew the minute I heard him get up and begin to minister, he shared how in 1999, and see if I went back in here, you you find out, and and we'll do it we'll do it in another video. But you find out that 1999, there were words spoken to me that changed the course of the word of God in the earth and brought about a great increase. And he said. He was so excited on that platform, he could hardly stand it. And he was going on and on and on about how something had happened in that year for his ministry. And it had just completely changed. It had busted wide open. And he went from thousands, you know, struggled for years to get thousands in his meetings. And all of a sudden, it went from thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. Well, and then at this time, when we got this word, it was all over Christian television. It was in Christian magazines. There was an explosion, and people's meetings went from hundreds of thousands to millions. And again, they had this weeping and people just being absolutely moved. Well, I'll tell you what, it wasn't the people that were moved. It, only it was the generals too because they had no idea what was happening but we knew because God was instructing us showing us of these things before they came to pass so here all of these generals back to the horses on the mount all of these generals came together they did they began to come together on their programs because they were looking at all of this happening and they were shocked and amazed by it. In shock and awe, just like the war in Iraq. In shock and awe, right? You know, that's what it was happening. And, um, and so they did. They began to cross over and begin to have each other on programs. And that even extended, my friends, on into... Uh, the fall of 2004 when Oral Roberts had his vision and he called Ken Brother Kenneth Copeland to come in and they counseled together. Billy Brim came, uh, Gloria, Richard Roberts, they all came together to counsel together over this powerful uh, troubling. Now I'm telling you that was a troubling vision that Oral Roberts received. And if you don't have that little book that he wrote about it, you need to get that and just study that because he saw the same thing as I did. He saw more. I saw more. He saw certain things I didn't see, but they're coming to pass. And Oral Roberts is no longer here with us, right? And so we have to get these words, people, and pay attention to them. Put them together. You know, connect the dots. Do what the Lord spoke to me in 1999 and said, Lift up your head, ginger, out of the sand. Begin to look up and hook up with things that you hear. I'm getting ready to put out a like prophetic voice in the earth. And those who have ears to hear and can identify the like prophetic voice in the earth, they will prosper. Those who do not listen and do not have their heads up, well, there may be woe unto them. Okay? So, these things are important. So, I did see the generals, and they did begin to come together. And everything was happening just exactly as he had said. There was a real awakening taking place all over 
the land. Oh my gosh, and it was so powerful. And now we've come to kind of a, seemingly a little bit of a lull. And the Lord told me in on May 7th, in a, a monumental vision that he gave me then, I know everything with me is monumental, but these things, <laughs> these things are different than at any other time in the, in the body of Christ, I am telling you. Uh, but on May 7th, he did speak to me that things would come in a lull, that we had come to a point. We had reached this point that had been set. Oh, and we're going to get into that later, too. But we had reached this point, and uh, to enter into it, there would be waves. There would be huge increase of things, wickedness, and, and just... You know, but then huge increases in the gospel, and then there would be what seemingly would be a lull, and then it would come back again. So that that is happening. The Lord showed me at the time that the generals were shocked and amazed at what was happening, and that was true. Those words proceeded forth as they testified about those meetings on national television broadcasts. Uh, this is when Benny Hen had his first meeting in India with masses that he couldn't comprehend. Uh, Reinhard Bonnke with masses of revival in Africa. And Billy Graham had a crusade that shocked even him. And all the years that he had crusades and had the large numbers that he had, it came out in a report that he had had a meeting that just absolutely... He couldn't believe the increase in numbers. It was the biggest crowd he'd had throughout his ministry. So I'm going to stop right there for uh, this segment. And we're going to come back and share more with you on this same subject. We're not going to go away from it until we can get through it all. And there is so much to get through. And you know, as we're covering the things that came prophetically spoken in this time from Manifesto Before the Cock Crows in the year 2004. Um, and there are prophetic things written in this book that came from years before that. And, and, um, and I receive things I mean, I have continued to receive things since 2004, too. So, and every day new things are happening. So it's a lot to keep up with. It's a lot to keep up with. But the message is very simple today. If you look at Matthew 24, 14, actually 11 through 14 right now, and even if that's all that you're looking at, or just Matthew 24, Oh, there's so much there that's being fulfilled before your very eyes, okay? And so this is why it's so necessary, God said, that we recognize the moment, recognize the season, like Jesus said in Matthew 24. We will come back, so stay with us. And right now, let's just, let's just offer up a quick, word of prayer here okay first of all lord i want to thank you for caring for us enough lord god that you come to us by your spirit and with your word and you share with us lord god things that we cannot see with our natural eyes hear with our natural ears you impart information, Lord God, that we otherwise would not have access to. Truths, Lord God, that are transpiring around about us. And God, the purpose in that is you want your people to prosper at all times. So when you reveal the dark and hidden things, Lord God, it is for us to prosper with. Father, I lift up any to you right now who don't know you. And Lord God, it's simple. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus, you made a sacrifice. You came to the earth. You lived your life here. You had your ministry. You showed, showed us what... We are to be like in God through you. 
and you died. You entered into hell. You were raised on the third day. You died for our sins. You took our place on that cross. You went to hell for us so that we don't have to go there. And God does not send us to hell. Just for your information, let me quote to you John 3.16. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send Jesus to the earth to condemn the earth, but that by Him we might be saved. So Lord, let any who, who want to call upon You in this very moment call upon You. And the Bible says that they will be saved. When they believe in their heart and confess with their mouth, they shall be saved. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm going to stop right there and we'll come back. This is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet Company. God bless you. Bye-bye now.